more uh, of those kind of diagrams showing various types of processes of implosion and explosion, almost as parts of an internal uh, dynamic. Similar kinds that they look like pure sort of, you know, visual explorations, just explorations of form, which to some extent they are, because these people will tell you that these are not to be thought of as meaningful, okay, or as representational, but to be thought of as purely optical. But what they're telling you is that optical uh, realities have effects on us. Those effects are related to experiences, and those experiences have certain forms that are, you know, kind of in some sense reproducible. I'm not going to say much about this because it's just for us to look at. And a lot of them are interspersed with text, as you'll find in the examples in this gallery, uh, that they have, uh, you know, a lot of text which are mantric, you know, the sort of spells that are connected with these diagrams. So you read them and you intone them at the same time. I mean. And, and view the diagrams at the same time. More of the same kind, diagrams and uh, interspersed with text. Text and image working together, where text is also a visual object and the image itself is also a sort of audible object. So there's a kind of a crossover of the senses that takes place. And we'll see how even in modern times, Part of the, some of the artists of the Neo Tantra movement are utilizing this, you know, synesthetic principle. In other words, that images have sounds associated with them, and sounds have colors and forms associated with them. More of the same. Now. That is an overview of the tantric art of the traditional sort of meditational practices. Now we come to what, what is called Neo Tantra. And Neo Tantra is a kind of a very important, vital sort of contemporary art movement in India. And it's a crossover movement between that sort of transcends religions in a sense. And also traditions, and in a sense even East and West. Well, most of these artists that we are talking about are in some sense, I mean, they're Indians, they are versed in the whole tantric vocabulary and experiential kind of lineage, but at the same time, they also are well versed in Western contemporary or modern sort of art, okay? And in some ways are addressing both audiences. This is a very famous artist by the name of S.H. Raza. He's a Muslim artist. And he lives in Paris. He's now over 80 years of age. But he began his career in uh, Bombay, in Mumbai, in the 40s, around the time when India got her independence. He belonged to the Progressive Artists Group, which is one of the first modernist groups of, of India, and uh, particularly from Mumbai. Calcutta produced a different stream of modernism, Indian modernism, and Mumbai produced another one. And this uh, S.H. Raza's work, uh, after a, you know, a few decades, turns towards this neo-tantric mode. But uh, you know, he's very kind of in some way, some ways, he's quite consciously a modernist in the Western sense because he was educated partly in Paris and uh, lived in India for some time and then went back to Paris and lives there now. Uh, so we find that um, his work is invested in the metaphors of Tantra, but he wants to shear away from them any kind of metaphorical significance. However, he does mix uh, words and, uh, and, and, and images, like in this one. And, uh, you know, he was one of the artists, or oh, actually he refused to, um, to, to, to exhibit in the Neo Tantra show for reasons of his own. 
but uh, he uh, has um, spoken a good deal about his art. And about this particular painting, uh, he, he has this right up here. This is a painting on what, he, what is known as the nada. The nada is the idea of the primordial sound. It's a sound without any origin. In other words, it's always there. It, it doesn't have any beginning or any end. I mean, it's what the Zen koan talks about when they tell you to listen to the sound of one hand clapping. So it's a, a, a kind of a always existent sound, but he uses this black uh, circle to give you the sense of that sound. And, uh, you know, he writes a, a, a mantra uh, about the nada over here in, 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 in black uh, ink. Um, so his work, um, you know, sort of, I mean, is, is one of the very well-known neo-tantric art works. This is another one by uh, Raza. So this, and you see he's using those triangles, but he has those striations in, in between where this kind of like very narrow white interspersed with the color. And um, he has spoken of his work in terms of a confluence of something which is purely optical as well as what he feels are the elements of inner nature, which he says that nature is everywhere inside us and outside us, and its basic principles are the same as the principles that are being depicted through Tantra. Now this whole idea of the energy rising up from below the sort of spine is likened to a serpent in the Tantric literature. So it's like a snake that's been struck and when it's coiled up and when it's struck it suddenly shoots up. And, you know, the sort of circles with its coils are like that spring that is, uh, you know, latent energy. And then when it's released, then you sometimes have uh, diagrams like this, which this is again Raza, which is in some sense depicting the kind of, you know, spiraling up of the energy from below. <clears throat> 